More climate trouble bubbling up in the Arctic. Experts study soil seafloors for methane released by thawing permafrost and methane is some 20 times more potent or powerful than CO2. Pure methane gas bubbling up from underwater vents escaping into northern skies adds to the global warming gases accumulating in the atmosphere and pure methane escaping in the massive amounts known to be locked in the Arctic permafrost and seabed would spell a climate catastrophe. Again, it would spell a climate catastrophe. So, is such an unlocking underway? Researchers say air temperatures in northwest Canada and Siberia and elsewhere in the Arctic have risen more than 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit since 1970 much faster than the global average. The summer thaw is reaching deeper into frozen soil at a rate of at least 1.5 inches a year and a further 13 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise is possible this century or in the next few decades says the UN sponsored Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC in 2007, air monitors detected a rise in methane concentrations in the atmosphere, apparently from far northern sources. Russian researchers in Siberia expressed alarm, warning of a potential, potential surge in the powerful greenhouse gas, additional warming, and unpredictable consequences for Earth's climate. The Russian scenario is disturbing enough to have led six U.S. national laboratories last year to launch a joint investigation of rapid methane release. And the IPCC chairman has asked his scientific network to focus on abrupt irreversible climate change from thawing permafrost. The data will come from teams like one led by Scott Dallimore they have pitched tents on the remote boggy fringe of North America, 1,400 miles from the North Pole, to learn more about seeps and the 25,000 lakes of the vast river delta. A puzzle, Dalamore calls it. Many factors are poorly studied, so we're really doing frontier science here, the Geological Survey of Canada scientists said. There is a very large storehouse of greenhouse gases within the permafrost and if that storehouse of greenhouse gases is fluxing to the surface that's important to know and it's important to know if that flux will change with time permafrost tundra soil frozen year round and covering almost one-fifth of earth's land surface runs anywhere from 150 to 2,000 feet deep in this region and in that freezer is carbon plant and animal matter accumulated throughout the ages. As the soil thaws these ancient deposits finally decompose attacked by microbes producing carbon dioxide and effing water methane both are greenhouse gases but again, methane is many times more powerful in warming the atmosphere. Researchers led by the University of Florida last year calculated that the top 10 feet of permafrost alone contain more carbon than is currently in the atmosphere. It's safe to say the surface permafrost, 3 to 5 meters, is at risk of thawing out in this century, if not in the next few decades. It can't stay intact. Methane also is present in another form, as hydrates, ice-like formations deep underground and under the seabed in which methane molecules are trapped within crystals of frozen water. If warmed, 
the methane will escape. And Dalimore, who has long researched hydrates as energy sources, believes the breakdown of such huge undersea formations may have produced conical hills found offshore in the Buford seabed, some of them more than 100 feet high. The methane seeps that the Canadians were studying in the Mackenzie Delta amid grassy islands, steel gray lakes, and summertime temperatures well above freezing. Our saucer-like indentations just 30 feet or so down on the lake bed. The ultimate source of that gas hydrates decomp decom decomposition or older natural gas deposits is unclear. But the immediate goal is quantifying the known emissions and finding the unknown. Delamore's team is also monitoring the seeps of underwater listening devices to assess, to assess whether seasonal change warming affects the emissions rate. Even if the lake seeps are centuries old, the question is, will they be accelerated by recent changes? A second question, are more seeps developing? A Coast Guard C-130 aircraft is overflying Alaska this summer with instruments sampling the air for methane and carbon dioxide. In parts of Alaska, scientists believe the number of lakes formed when terrain collapses over thawing permafrost and fields of meltwater may have doubled in the past three decades. Those lakes, in turn, then expand, thawing more permafrost on their edges, exposing even more carbon, the feedback loop. Off Norway's Arctic island chain last September, British scientists reported finding some 250 methane plumes rising from the shallow seabed and afloat above the huge shallow continental shelf north of Siberia. Russian researchers have detected seabed methane chimneys sending gas bubbling up to the surface possibly from hydrates. Reporting to the European Geophysical Union last year the scientists affiliated with the University of Alaska and the Russian Academy of Sciences cited extreme saturation of methane in surface waters and in the air above. They said up to 10% of the undersea permafrost area had melted and it was highly possible that this would open the way to abrupt release of an estimated 50 billion tons of methane. Depending on how much dissolved in the sea, that might multiply methane in the atmosphere several fold, boosting temperatures enough to cause catastrophic greenhouse warming. And again, catastrophic greenhouse warming, as the Russians called it. It would be self-perpetuating, melting more permafrost, emitting more methane, heating up the Earth's atmosphere faster and faster. There's no doubt the North contains enough potential methane and carbon dioxide to cause abrupt climate change. Canada's preeminent permafrost expert Chris Byrne has trekked to lonely locations in these high latitudes for almost three decades, meticulously chronicling the changes in the tundra. His team has found the frozen ground warming down to approximately 250 feet and he believes the world is courting disaster. Again, the world is courting disaster and failing to curb warming by curbing greenhouse gases. If we lost just 1% of the carbon and permafrost today, we'd be close to a year's contributions from industrial sources. He said, I don't think policymakers have woken up to this. It's not in their risk assessments. So how likely is a major release? I don't think it's a case of likely, likelihood, he said. I think we are playing with fire. And 
there's something much more going on here. Methane is a very potent, potent gas, and it will warm up the atmosphere. It will contribute to climate change and global warming. And once again, all these are more signs of the end times, transition days. The transition is happening rapidly all around the world, and there are many signs.